The Tesla Cybertruck has probably been one of the most talked about and hyped vehicles I have ever seen to hit the consumer market. Recently, just last week, I was able to have the opportunity to go down to Giga Texas and actually see these things up close. Check out the production line, as well as see all of the consumer vehicles that were handed out at the Cybertruck delivery event in Austin, Texas. And one thing I took away most from this trip and seeing between 100 and 150 Tesla Cybertrucks that we saw how impressive the build quality was. So today we're gonna to be talking about all of my impressions showing you photos, showing you some videos of all of the Cybertrucks we saw and my initial thoughts on their build quality. Welcome back to another out of spec detailing video here from Clear Detailing in Northern Colorado. Let's jump into it. As I said, the Tesla Cybertruck has had so much buzz around it lately. We've seen pre-production prototypes all over the country now, people being able to get up close and personal with them and actually check them out. Now, like I said, this last week, I had the opportunity to actually attend the Cybertruck delivery event down at Giga Texas in Austin. And man, oh man, what a phenomenal experience. Now, I got to say, not that my opinion matters on the styling. When this first launched four years ago, I thought it was the ugliest thing I've ever seen. I thought it looked like a four-year-old designed it on a napkin. And I said, Tesla will never produce this thing. But man, oh man, did they prove us wrong. Now, I had actually never seen a Cybertruck until I went to the factory and got to see one up close and personal. And I gotta say, my opinion really flip-flopped. Again, not like it matters. If you think it's ugly and it's the most ridiculous thing ever, I totally respect where you're coming from. If you think it's the coolest thing you've ever seen, I totally get where you're coming from. In all reality, it doesn't really matter. Some people are gonna buy these, some people don't. So. We're just gonna see how this rolls out over the coming years. But my initial impression with the Cybertruck was I was highly, highly skeptical of the stainless steel. You know, being a professional detailer, I really work a lot with vehicles like this. These are my two Model 3s, and yeah, just love dealing with paint, doing paint corrections and polishes and ceramic coatings and keeping them as clean as humanly possible. And then Tesla just completely said, okay, we're gonna kind of rewrite the rule books here and actually do stainless steel body panels on this. Now, they're not the first ones to do this, of course. The DeLorean that came out many, many years ago, actually had 304 stainless steel, which is very similar to what you see in kitchen appliances, like uh, basically refrigerators, ovens, dishwashers, things like that. Now, from my understanding, after the delivery event, this is actually a little bit slightly different than stainless steel. It's a steel alloy that Tesla has basically produced in conjunction with SpaceX. And I gotta say, my biggest impression from this entire event, other than the build quality, is how neat the stainless steel is up close and personal. I really thought it was gonna look like absolute crap, to be totally honest with you. But being up close with it, being able to actually touch the material, seeing how it is thick, but it's also beautifully thin on basically like the door edges and areas like the frunk. I was just so unbelievably impressed with the material. One thing I wasn't impressed with though, was the resistance to things like fingerprints. I always think the word stainless steel is quite weird because every time I see a stainless steel and appliance, they have streaks all over them, they have fingerprints all over them, just gunk everywhere. It's a really tricky material to actually clean and get in a nice streak-free finish. So of course, once we have a Cybertruck actually here, a customer delivered one that I can test out all of the detailing tools and products, believe me, we're gonna be going through absolutely everything, tons and tons of content to come on the Out of Spec Detailing channel. Now, like I said, we actually got to go to the factory. One of the coolest parts of this was actually walking the Cybertruck production line. And man, oh man, I, I gotta say, this is one of the coolest experiences of my life. I love Teslas, I love so many cars. I'm an enthusiast of cars, not just the brand Tesla, but seeing 
how these vehicles are actually constructed and put together, seeing them in different stages. We saw Cybertrucks there without any of the stainless steel panels on them, able to get up close and personal and see things like the front castings, the rear castings, all the suspension components, all of basically the high voltage systems and air suspension and just everything. We'll definitely overlay some clips here so you guys can check those out. I will also leave a link in the description below to the video I did with Kyle Connor over on the Out of Spec Reviews channel where he and I basically walked the entire assembly line and uh, we basically closed it down. It was to ourselves. We could walk around, take photos, video, touch, whatever we really wanted to. Tesla was so impressive at just like, here's our product, ask us anything you'd like to about it, and uh, here it is. It was really, really extraordinary to see that. But the cool thing going walking down the production line is seeing all of like the suspension componentry getting actually put into the vehicle. And then you would go down and see the bedsides put on with the front fenders, but the doors off. It really gave me a lot more appreciation for how vehicles are produced. I've watched so many videos on how, you know, factories work, how vehicles are assembled. And uh, yeah, seeing it up close and personal is definitely a whole new perspective. Now I will say that does not mean that I am going to start being soft on these companies. When their cars come in, they're not screwed together properly. Think if you're gonna charge a lot of money and all of the investment going into these vehicles, they better be put together really, really well, especially for the price. So my two main takeaways from the event was the stainless steel is really cool, very highly prone to fingerprints. Um, you could definitely see down the side of them where they've basically tried to wipe it. There, there was some streaking and things like that. So I'm definitely gonna dive way into that once we actually have one here. But really the build quality shocked me more than absolutely anything. Tesla's rollout of the Cybertruck has probably been one of the most interesting things we have ever seen in the automotive market. They've had test mules and pre-production prototypes running around the entire country for the last, I don't even know how many months, leading up to finally the delivery event. And a lot of these were um, vehicles that were driven by folks like Franz who actually designed the Cybertruck and he would take them to cars and coffee and goodness gracious, you would see photos of basically panels hanging off and like just, it literally looked like the truck was put together with bubble gum. And that was completely opposite to what we actually saw at the factory. I believe we saw anywhere between 100 and 150 fully produced and specced Cybertrucks. Now I believe most of these to be pre-production prototypes, but we did get the opportunity to get up close and personal with the actual, actual foundation series first 10 or so delivered Cybertrucks that were handed over to customers. My initial impressions just walking around these vehicles is, holy crap, they nailed how these things were screwed together. Now I have to make a big caveat with this. My thoughts behind this is, if they're gonna hand over the first 10, they better have these things slightly dialed because you have folks like me nitpicking these vehicles. Now, I also had the opportunity that I took a lot of photos and videos of a vehicle that we had in our showroom locally here to us in Tesla Littleton. Now there's Cybertrucks, I believe there's 15 or 16 all over the country in select showrooms that you can actually go and check out in person. It seemed to be a series production vehicle that was in the showroom. Um, I believe it was VIN 1080 something, somewhere in there. Um, I'm not sure if they're actually numbering these by how they were actually produced. One of the Cybertrucks I got up close and personal to at the actual event was VIN 002. Um, so I'm not sure, again, I don't know if they're numbering these in sequential order, not sure on that. The folks down at Tesla Littleton told me this was a permanent display, that this was not gonna be a vehicle that was actually going to be on sale, but for people to come check out and actually see the Cybertruck. Now my thoughts on this one were actually a little bit more surprising. Every single truck that I saw down at Giga Texas really seemed screwed together quite well. Now, the one at Tesla Littleton, I would say had a few more little issues. We're gonna overlay some clips and things here and kind of show you what I'm talking about. Now I would say in no way is this truck 
very, very poorly put together. I have been quite critical of Tesla in the past on things like their Model X that literally I don't even understand how they are still producing these vehicles and going through quality control. I've had issues with my Model 3s here as well. I'm very open and vocal about that. I do love their vehicles, but you're not buying something like a Porsche or Audi uh, type build quality with Teslas. But let's talk about a few things that I saw at the one in Littleton. Now, basically the plastic pieces that run the entire tonneau cover. On the driver side of this one, you could see a lot of warping in it. And I believe that probably to be some of the clips that they're using in here, basically pulling down on that plastic in areas and then skipping, you know, six, seven inches down the way and not having any sort of clip there. And it's actually kind of bowing up and then it bows down and does this kind of situation. So I think that was, yeah, maybe not something great. Again, I don't think it's gonna affect the usability of the vehicle, but, my impression is if you're paying hundred grand for a truck, basically the top spec Cybertruck, this thing should look nice. I mean, we've seen Rivian in the past, they've had their issues, but have really started to make these trucks look like they're nicely built and really feel like the price that they're asking for them. So I really expect Tesla to, once they ramp these things, hopefully these vehicles are actually gonna be produced quite nice. A few other things that I saw at the Littleton one, um, some discrepancies in the rear taillights. Some were kind of sticking out a little bit. I believe that to be probably how the actual bed folds up into it. That can be some slight adjustment in there. Basically the same way the trunks work here on the Model 3, they have little adjusters on them. You can put it up, you can kind of put it out a little bit. So I think some of that stuff can be easily remedied down the road. The stainless steel still looked incredible at Tesla Littleton. There was a few small discrepancies of how these pieces actually looked in person. You could see a little bit of gapping on them. Um, the piece that actually runs basically from the rear bed all the way up in the triangle is probably one of the most interesting pieces I've seen. This area down here where that A pillar kind of comes down and connects to the front fender seemed to be a massive issue for Tesla on their pre-production prototypes. And most of these looked really, really impressively put on. Now I will say we were able to check out a um, crash tested one actually outside of the factory there. And one of them basically had this panel completely sticking off. It was a front impact on it. And this piece didn't look to be bolted whatsoever to the frame, actually used high automotive grade adhesive. And most people may think, well, oh, it's just adhesive on, that's gonna come off after time. Automotive adhesive has come a long, long ways. You'd be shocked to see how much of this is used around numerous vehicles, Porsche, Audi, Lamborghini, Ferrari, Tesla, whatever, you name it, they all really utilize this. Now, one area I was mostly impressed at the factory versus our Tesla Littleton showroom was the front trunk. So this is actually the first time Tesla has ever offered a powered front trunk. All of them at the factory were literally millimeter perfect. I mean, the gapping down all the way was absolutely incredible. The one at the showroom in Littleton did have some issues where you could see basically the, the hood was sagging a little bit over the front fender in a few areas and a little bit bigger gaps there. Would I say it's the end of the world? Absolutely not, but I think it's gonna be interesting to see again, how when they actually ramp production, what these vehicles are gonna look like. I also did notice on the one in Littleton that there were a few small dents in the stainless steel. Hope we can overlay some clips here and you can actually see where there looks like a little bit of an impact. I don't know this to be um, like it was actually damaged. Maybe this is how the actual material looks. You do notice on the Cybertruck when you basically look at it from somewhat of a three quarter angle or maybe slightly less looking down the side of the vehicle, you do get some warping in the stainless steel. We've also seen in quite a few reviews of how resilient this stuff is to things like dents. Of course, Tesla has actually shot the freaking stainless steel. Um, of course, different lower caliber bullets were not able to penetrate the side. You can check out thousands of videos on that. Um, Matt Watson from CarWow actually went up to a Cybertruck he had down at the factory and was kicking it. And man, oh man, it is so impressive 
how that material actually just kind of absorbed it and bounced back. There was no dents or anything like that. So I'll be curious to see over time, if this stuff is dented, is it able to be fixed? My theory is probably not. Are you gonna have to get a door fully reskinned? I mean, if you actually care about it. Most people say, ah, oh, it's a truck, who cares? But, you know, Tesla really went at this approach of, you know, paint is very fragile and I would a thousand percent agree. People using these for, you know, oil rig um, trucks and carpenters and things like that, or work trucks, they're going around, they're throwing their toolboxes in these, scratching them up, you know, doing a lot of things like that. And honestly, paint and things like F-150s with very, very thin aluminum can dent really, really easily. So they went at this more hardcore approach. Let's go really cold rolled stainless steel that is very, very absorbent. Um, of impacts and doesn't scratch as easy. I'll be curious to see how the stainless steel actually does scratch over time. Again, I don't think people are really gonna care about doing two bucket washes on things like these, but I think being able to get the grime off of it over time is gonna be something we need to really look into. Um, now, a lot of these, the doors were really impressively put together. A really interesting approach at how they did it, not having door handles. What you will notice though, is basically in your B pillar, and I guess C pillar area here, you basically have a plastic piece that you push your hand into and it pops the door out. Now, what happens there, because you don't have anything like the black trim here on the Model 3, is people grab it and you're just getting fingerprints in this area all the time. Same thing when you actually close it. So we'll put up some photos here of how nasty this area actually gets. I think it's really, really interesting how the stainless steel is gonna wear and age and things like that. But I mean, man, oh man, it is just, this truck is really, really impressive in person. I really don't think photos do it justice. My other big takeaway from this was one of the biggest ones, the front glass. The glass is just massive. It makes this window look so puny. I mean, it literally feels like it's this entire piece. Massively impressive how nice everything was put together, how the glass was laid down and matched up with basically the rear sunroof here is just Wow, I'm very, very impressed with that. Tesla has not been known to make the best glass, having issues like basically the sunroof sticking up over the windshield here, causing a lot of air and things like that to come in there. Doesn't seem to be an issue on this from all of them that I really looked at. Um, few other things, it's really interesting, these body panels, like it looks very complex and, it, and I understand the actual production of the stainless steel to be highly, highly complex, that they're actually not taking a machine and pressing them to make the bend lines, but using some sort of technology like an air hockey table to actually mold and bend the stainless steel seems so interesting to me, but I gotta say massively impressed with 99% of the trucks I looked at like it, you know, even myself that is very nitpicky on things would be happy to take delivery of one that had a few small issues here and there. I really, really did not expect that to be the case. Um, a couple other things I want to touch on is the interior. So we are able to get up close and personal to them, touch the seats, touch different materials in there. And I got to say the seats, actually, we talked to one of the engineers who is head of Cybertruck interior. He told us that it was very, very close to the same material material you find in Model S and X on the seats. Now, currently they only have a black option. We'll be curious to see if they actually come out with white seats. Kind of suspect they won't being that it's a truck. They think it's gonna get a little bit dirtier over time, but the seats feel really, really nice. This vegan, which I hate that word for interior, interior materials, but this synthetic leather that they're using felt really, really, really nice. Um, you can definitely tell in the Cybertruck, they thought a lot about people using this as an actual work truck. The high impact areas are some more rigid plastics. I didn't really dive deep into the interior, but I just wanted to give you some initial thoughts. It feels very durable, but it also feels plush in a very unique way. The glass is done really nice as well. Um, one thing I'm gonna hate doing on these cars is actually cleaning the windscreen. It is literally like three feet to the bottom of the windshield from where the dash starts. I think I'm gonna have to come up with a crazy solution to actually clean them. 
But I would say after all of the photos and videos that I took, I am pretty darn impressed with how these things are screwed together. It honestly blew me away in all honesty. They've done some really cool things like on the foundation series and the beast mode variant, actually etching in um, some plaques or emblems into the stainless steel. It's really, really cool technology, seems very well done. Hopefully we can overlay some photos of those here. Honestly, guys, my takeaway from it was I didn't think they would even be close to this far into production when we actually went in there and saw them. I didn't think these original trucks they handed out were going to be put together as nice as they were. Now I would say, again, there's still some little tolerances that I think they really need to get dialed in, but I'm massively impressed with the things that I'm actually seeing from these trucks. I really expected it to be like something like the Model X where the doors are completely off, the front trunk just is not even close to matching up as far as lining up and having issues like maybe the hood or the front closing and then basically it popping back up because it got out of alignment. I really expected to see a lot of things like that, but it seems to me like they've gone through and kind of thought through this and really have had quite a bit of time since that original prototype four years ago and really start dialing these in. Now, again, it's yet to be seen how production ramp is gonna change things. We all know Elon has talked a lot about production hell and, uh, yeah, is it gonna be hell for the Cybertruck? Honestly, I don't know. I do kind of expect to see vehicles that are delivered to customers after this event, maybe seeing them next year, aren't gonna be screwed together so nice. Of course, we're gonna cover that and everything once we actually have one here. But I just wanted to give you guys my overall impressions with the Cybertruck so far, as far as fit and finish and build quality. And I gotta say, very, very impressed. The stainless steel, I think, is one of the most unique materials out there. I kind of think it's a shame that people are going to wrap these things because the material is so cool and unique. Of course, I'm so anxious to test out all of my products on it and find good solutions to fingerprints. Can we coat these things? Um, can you PPF them to kind of maintain it? I'm not thinking so, um, but we'll dive all that in and more later on. So Thanks so much for watching another out of spec detailing video. Let me know in the comments below what you think. Um, yeah, it's an interesting one. Definitely a polarizing vehicle, but we'll catch you in the next one. See you next time. Bye-bye.